Welcome, everyone, to today's discussion on a topic that might hit close to home for many of us or our loved ones. We're going to delve into a phenomenon that occurs all too often. Sudden aging of the legs which leads to difficulty in walking or even the loss of this vital function. This isn't about the natural aging process that we all go through. This is about an abrupt change that seems to happen almost overnight. Let's explore the common characteristics of people who experience this sudden change and how we can potentially mitigate these risks. Starting with the fifth characteristic, it's an activity. It's a silent but profound issue that affects not only the health of our legs but the entirety of our well-being. Let's start with the basics. Our legs are designed for movement. They contain some of the largest and strongest muscles in our body, evolved for walking, running, jumping, all forms of locomotion. These muscles are not just for mobility. They play a pivotal role in systemic health, including metabolic function and even cognitive health. But the maxim, use it or lose it, holds particularly true when it comes to muscle mass and strength. Inactivity leads to a decline in muscle strength and mass, known scientifically as sarcopenia. This isn't just an issue for the elderly. It can happen at any age. Research has shown that muscle mass decreases approximately 3-8% per decade after the age of 30, and this rate increases after the age of 60. However, the rate can be accelerated by physical inactivity, regardless of age. The science is clear. A study published in the Journal of Physiology found that two weeks of reduced physical activity can result in a significant decrease in muscle mass, leading to muscle atrophy and reduced metabolic health. This loss of muscle mass can lead to a reduction in strength, which can significantly impact an individual's ability to walk and perform daily activities. But the effects of inactivity extend beyond the muscles to the very vessels that fuel them, the blood vessels. Without regular activity, blood flow can become restricted, leading to a cascade of health issues. The endothelial function, the ability of your blood vessels to dilate and increase blood flow, is compromised with inactivity. This can result in a decrease in the delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the leg muscles, further exacerbating muscle weakness and health. Inactivity also has a profound impact on the neuromuscular junctions, the critical points where nerves and muscles communicate. These junctions are essential for initiating muscle contraction and movement. A study from the Journal of Applied Physiology suggests that inactivity can lead to a decline in the function of these junctions further impairing muscle function and coordination. Let's consider balance and flexibility, which are also compromised due to inactivity. Our legs are part of a complex system that allows us to stand upright and move through our environment. When we don't regularly engage in activities that challenge our balance and flexibility, we lose not only muscle strength but also the neuromuscular control that keeps us agile and stable on our feet. Furthermore, inactivity can lead to increased body fat, which adds stress to the legs and joints, compounding the problem. Research in obesity reviews indicates that an increase in body fat, particularly around the waist, is associated with decreased muscle quality and function. This can lead to a vicious cycle where walking becomes difficult, leading to further inactivity and further muscle deterioration. Now, you might be wondering, what can be done about it? The answer is both simple and challenging. Move. Incorporating regular physical activity into your daily routine is the key. The World Health Organization recommends at least 150 minutes of moderate-intensity aerobic physical activity throughout the week for adults aged 18 to 64 years. This can include walking, cycling, or any other form of physical activity that increases heart rate and encourages muscle use. Strength training is equally important. A study from the Archives of Internal Medicine showed that a regular routine of resistance exercise can significantly increase muscle strength and function, which is vital for maintaining mobility. This doesn't mean you need to lift heavy weights. Body weight exercises, resistance bands, or light dumbbells can be just as effective. Remember that our legs carry us through life. They are the foundation upon which we stand, both literally and metaphorically. Inactivity is not just about losing the ability to walk. It's about losing independence, quality of life, and longevity. It's a reversible condition, and it's within our control to prevent it.
So I urge you to stand up, to move, to walk, to embrace the full range of motion that your legs are capable of. Your future self will thank you for it. The fourth characteristic is poor circulation. In our journey to understand the sudden aging of legs, we arrive at the fourth key characteristic, poor circulation. This is a fundamental issue, one that can silently undermine the vitality of our legs, leading to a loss of their function in an abrupt and distressing manner. Let's explore the intricacies of circulation and its paramount importance to our mobility. Circulation isn't just about blood flowing through our veins, it's about life force. It's about delivering oxygen and nutrients to every cell in our legs, and removing waste products that can be detrimental to our health. When this system falters, when the circulation becomes poor, the consequences can manifest rapidly, leading to pain, weakness, and a loss of the ability to walk. One of the main culprits of poor circulation is peripheral artery disease, or PAD. This condition, marked by narrowed blood vessels and reduced blood flow, can escalate quickly, often due to other health issues like high cholesterol or high blood pressure, which compound over time. The relationship between PAD and walking difficulties is well documented in scientific literature. A study in the Journal of American Heart Association found that individuals with PAD are likely to experience leg weakness, have a higher risk of falls, and may suddenly find it hard to walk even short distances. Smoking is a significant risk factor that exacerbates poor circulation. The toxins in cigarettes directly damage the lining of the arteries, leading to atherosclerosis, which is the buildup of plaques that narrow and harden the arteries. According to research in circulation, smokers with PAD are at an even higher risk of experiencing rapid declines in their walking ability. Diabetes also plays a role here. High blood sugar levels can cause damage to both large and small blood vessels, which can result in decreased circulation to the legs. The Diabetes Care Journal highlights that individuals with diabetes are more likely to develop PAD, which can lead to severe mobility issues. Inflammation is another factor that can lead to poor circulation. Chronic inflammation can cause damage to blood vessels, making it difficult for blood to flow smoothly. A study published in The Lancet notes that inflammation is a key player in atherosclerosis and can lead to acute changes in circulation. So, what can be done to maintain good circulation in our legs? The answer lies in both lifestyle changes and medical intervention when necessary. Regular exercise is paramount. Aerobic activities, like walking or cycling, can help improve the capacity of the blood vessels to supply the legs with oxygen and nutrients. It's like a natural angiogenesis, forming new blood vessels to support the circulatory system. Diet also plays a crucial role. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and healthy fats can help reduce inflammation and keep the blood vessels healthy. The Journal of Nutrition supports that a diet high in these nutrients is associated with a lower risk of PAD. For those who already have PAD, medical treatments such as medications to lower cholesterol and blood pressure, or even surgical interventions to open up blocked arteries, may be necessary. These treatments, along with lifestyle changes, can significantly improve circulation and prevent the sudden loss of walking ability. It's essential to understand the silent threat that poor circulation poses to our leg health and mobility. By taking proactive steps to manage risk factors and maintain a healthy lifestyle, we can safeguard the vitality of our legs. Remember, the strength of our legs is a reflection of the health of our circulatory system. By keeping our blood vessels in good shape, we keep ourselves moving forward, step by step. The third characteristic to be aware of is neuropathy, particularly in diabetes. As we continue our exploration into the sudden aging of legs, we come to the third critical characteristic, neuropathy. This is particularly prevalent in people with diabetes, where high blood sugar levels over time can cause significant nerve damage. Let's delve deeper into how neuropathy can lead to a rapid decline in the health of our legs and what we can do to prevent or manage this condition. Neuropathy affects our body's ability to send signals properly. Imagine the nerves as wiring in a complex circuit. When they're damaged, the messages that coordinate movement, sensation, and strength in our legs become garbled or lost. 
For people with diabetes, this is a grave concern because the high glucose levels in the blood can slowly erode the integrity of these nerves. The statistics are stark. The National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases reports that about half of all people with diabetes have some form of nerve damage, or neuropathy. It's a condition that can creep up unnoticed, then suddenly assert itself with symptoms like pain, tingling, or numbness in the legs. But it's the loss of sensation that's particularly insidious because it can lead to injuries that go unnoticed, infections, and in severe cases, even amputations. Studies, including those published in the Diabetes Care Journal, have linked long-term, uncontrolled diabetes with a high risk of diabetic neuropathy. This nerve damage can lead to a condition known as diabetic foot, where even a small cut can have serious consequences. The loss of sensation means that these minor injuries can become major without proper care and attention. But it's not just sensation that's affected. Motor nerves can also be damaged, leading to muscle weakness and atrophy in the legs. This can occur quite suddenly, particularly when the body is subjected to stress or illness, which may exacerbate the underlying neuropathy. What's crucial to understand is that this isn't an inevitable outcome. Tight glucose control can reduce the incidence of neuropathy significantly. A landmark study, the Diabetes Control and Complications Trial, DCCT, showed that intensive blood sugar control reduced the risk of neuropathy by up to 60% in people with type 1 diabetes. Similar principles apply to type 2 diabetes, with studies indicating that diet, exercise, and medication to control blood sugar can have a profound effect on the development of neuropathy. Exercise is a dual-edged sword when it comes to neuropathy. On the one hand, it's essential for blood sugar control. On the other, people with neuropathy need to exercise caution to avoid foot injuries. Low-impact exercises such as swimming, cycling, or yoga can be beneficial. The key is to stay active while protecting the feet from injury, which is why proper footwear and regular foot exams are essential. Diet also plays a significant role. A diet rich in nutrients that support nerve health, such as B vitamins, antioxidants, and omega-3 fatty acids, can help prevent or slow the progression of neuropathy. Supplements can also be beneficial, but they should be taken under medical supervision. Neuropathy is a formidable opponent in the quest to maintain the health of our legs. But with vigilant management of blood sugar levels, a healthy lifestyle, and regular medical checkups, it's possible to prevent or delay the onset of this condition. Remember, the vitality of our legs is deeply connected to the health of our nerves. By protecting our nerves, we protect our ability to walk, to move, and to stay independent. Thank you. The second characteristic involves joint health, specifically arthritis. As we delve further into the sudden aging of legs, the second most significant characteristic comes into focus. Joint health, specifically the impact of arthritis. Arthritis is often perceived as a gradual wear and tear of joints, but its ability to suddenly restrict mobility is frequently underestimated. Let's illuminate the reality of arthritis and its acute effects on our ability to walk. Arthritis, in its many forms, from osteoarthritis to rheumatoid arthritis, is not just about aging. It's an inflammatory process that can cause rapid deterioration of joint health, leading to pain, stiffness, and significant mobility issues. The joints in our legs, the hips, knees, and ankles, are complex structures that are essential for movement. When they are compromised, the simple act of walking can become painful, or in severe cases, nearly impossible. The science behind arthritis and mobility is compelling and somewhat alarming. A study from the Arthritis and Rheumatology Journal found that osteoarthritis of the knee, one of the most common forms of arthritis, can lead to a sudden decrease in walking capability due to joint pain and muscle weakness. The inflammation associated with arthritis can cause a rapid breakdown of cartilage, the cushioning material at the end of bones, and once this degradation starts, it can escalate quickly if left unmanaged. Furthermore, rheumatoid arthritis, an autoimmune form of the condition, can cause sudden joint damage due to the body's immune system mistakenly attacking the joint linings. This can lead to a swift decline in mobility, 
as detailed in research published in the Annals of the Rheumatic Diseases. The inflammation can spread, affecting multiple joints and severely limiting movement. But here's the crucial part. Arthritis doesn't have to be a sentence to immobility. Early diagnosis and treatment can make a significant difference. Anti-inflammatory medications, physical therapy, and in some cases, joint replacement surgery, can manage the symptoms and slow the progression of the disease. Prevention also plays a key role. Maintaining a healthy weight can reduce the strain on leg joints, as every extra pound adds undue pressure on knees and hips. A study in the Journal of the American Medical Association concluded that weight loss for overweight and obese individuals with knee osteoarthritis can reduce pain and improve function significantly. Regular exercise, tailored to individual capabilities and limitations, can strengthen the muscles around the joints, providing better support and reducing the burden on the joint itself. The American Journal of Preventive Medicine supports this approach, advocating for physical activity as a means to prevent and mitigate the impact of arthritis. Diet is another powerful tool. A diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids, antioxidants, and phytochemicals can help control inflammation. Foods high in these nutrients, such as fatty fish, nuts, seeds, fruits, and vegetables, have been associated with lower levels of inflammatory markers, as per the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Arthritis is a formidable foe when it comes to the sudden aging of our legs, but it's not an insurmountable one. With proactive management, including medical treatment, lifestyle adjustments, and dietary considerations, we can preserve our joint health and maintain our mobility. Remember, the flexibility and strength of our joints are critical to our freedom of movement. By nurturing our joints, we safeguard our ability to walk and remain active as we age. And the number one characteristic is osteoporosis. We've now arrived at the pinnacle, the number one characteristic that can lead to a sudden and dramatic aging of the legs, osteoporosis. This condition, often called the silent thief, can stealthily weaken bones over the years, leading to a point where a fracture can occur with the simplest of falls, and indeed, suddenly rob you of your mobility. Osteoporosis is characterized by low bone mass and the deterioration of bone tissue, which leads to increased bone fragility. The legs, containing the body's longest and strongest bones, are particularly vulnerable. When these bones lose density, they become brittle and susceptible to fractures, with the hip being one of the most common and debilitating fracture sites. The link between osteoporosis and walking difficulties is well established. The Journal of Bone and Mineral Research has shown that those who suffer from a hip fracture due to osteoporosis have a significant risk of losing their ability to walk independently, if at all. And it's not just the risk of fracture that's the issue. Osteoporosis can also lead to changes in posture and gait, which in turn can cause a loss of balance and coordination. But the story of osteoporosis is not one without hope. While the condition is more common as we age, it is not an inevitable part of aging. There are steps we can take to prevent or slow its progression. Calcium and vitamin D are the cornerstones of bone health. Calcium is the key building block of bone, while vitamin D is essential for calcium absorption. The New England Journal of Medicine provides evidence that adequate intake of these nutrients can help maintain bone density and reduce the risk of fractures. Physical activity, especially weight-bearing exercises like walking or jogging, can stimulate bone formation and slow the loss of bone density. A meta-analysis in the Journal of Bone and Mineral Metabolism found that exercise has a beneficial effect on bone density and reduces fall risk in older adults. Furthermore, lifestyle choices such as smoking cessation and moderation of alcohol intake are crucial in the fight against osteoporosis. Both smoking and excessive alcohol consumption have been linked to decreased bone mass and increased fracture risk. Screening for osteoporosis is also vital, particularly for postmenopausal women and older adults. Bone density tests can detect osteoporosis before a fracture occurs and can also predict one's chances of fracturing in the future. With early detection, medications that help to strengthen bones can be prescribed, as supported by research in the Annals of Internal Medicine. 
Osteoporosis is a silent condition that can have a sudden and devastating impact on a person's ability to walk. However, by understanding the risk factors and taking proactive measures to build and maintain strong bones, we can defend ourselves against this thief of mobility. The health of our bones is deeply intertwined with the health of our legs, and by protecting our bones, we protect our independence and our ability to move through the world with ease. In conclusion, while the sudden loss of the ability to walk can be a complex issue with various contributing factors, there are common threads that weave through each case. Inactivity, poor circulation, neuropathy, joint health, and bone density are all areas that, if addressed proactively, can help maintain leg health and mobility. It's about understanding these risk factors and taking steps to manage them before they become insurmountable. Remember, the power to change your health outcomes lies, in many cases, in your hands, and in your legs. Thank you for joining me in this important lesson.